Oh, First Corinthians 10, verse 13. Oh. Got me all shook up. <laughs> Got me all shook up. First Corinthians 10. <laughs> Well, we're we'll trying not to shake you down. No, I'm okay now. I'm fine. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm fine. Look at him. Fine. Right. <laughs> 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 There's going to be controversy in what I'm reading right now. First Corinthians 10, verse 13 says, "There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man." In other words. There's nothing you're ever going to face that someone else hasn't faced already. That's right. Amen. That's right. Your temptation is not unusual. Right. Huh? That's right. Someone's done been there and done that. Yeah, absolutely. So, so don't think it's strange or uncommon that you're being tried like you are. Okay, now he goes on to say. But God is faithful. <laughs> but God is faithful. Now, here's the controversial part. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able? I've heard people say, God God will never put anything on you that you can't bear. Now, 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 now that's not what this scripture is saying. And I'm going to show you this. Oh, Jesus, help me tonight. Oh, God, help me. Watch this. But God is faithful who shall not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. All right? To be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. Now, 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 hold on. That doesn't mean a way to get out of it. Go on, brother. You've been, you've been, thank you, sis. You've been to seminary. You, you know what I'm talking about. That doesn't mean a way to get out of it. Not what he's saying here, because let me show you why he's not saying that. The next phrase is that ye may be able to bear it. To bear it. To bear it. Thank you, Lord. In other words, Paul is saying that with every temptation, God is going to make a way for you to bear that temptation. Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Not a way to get out of the temptation or away from it, but a way to have victory right in the middle of it. Amen. Huh? Amen. That's why he's talking about. And, and in this particular passage of Scripture, it's not God doing the tempting. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Huh? Amen. Honestly, God doesn't tempt. He tests. Right. Right. The, when, when it talks about temptation coming from God, it's a wrong interpretation. Uh, and, and not that I'm the smartest person around. I just studied a little bit. It, it, it means a trial or a test. The testing that comes from God is not a testing for Him to find out who you are or what you are or how much faith you have. He already knows all of that. Amen. That tempting comes, or that testing comes rather, for you to understand and you to realize who you are, what you are, and how much faith you have. Alright, now, here it says... <laughs> Am I doing all right so far? You're doing fine. Go ahead. I'm, I'm ready to get back to my class. You're getting ready to kill us, but it's all right. <sighs> oh, Jesus. Now it says, <laughs> you are going to be tempted. Anybody who tells you they're not tempted, they're lying to you. I don't care how big name preacher it is, they're lying. Amen. Absolutely. Everybody... It's tempted. I used to think as a young preacher, man, I'll be glad when I get to be an older preacher because old, old folks can't be tempted. There's just no way. Oh, what would old folks get tempted about? I'm tempted more now than I was when I was young. Be closer to the go. The reason I overcome a lot of those temptations now is because I know I don't have the strength to do it. <laughs> I, I just, I'm too old now. But now watch this. He says that God will make a way of escape. In other words, God, if you can have a relationship with God, that when you're in the middle of hell, your mind is on heaven. Hallelujah. That when you're in the middle of defeat, your mind is on victory. Ah, when you're in the middle of being weak, you find strength. 
We preached a little bit about that last night. Yeah. When you're in the middle of everyone screaming at you that you can't make it, you can't make it, your mind says, not only can I, I will. And stand back and watch me defeat this thing. You can't defeat it if you're away from it, but you can defeat it when you're in the middle of it. You do not defeat the things of life and temptation by running from them. No. True. Huh? Matter of fact, when you get delivered from whatever it is, the, the, the amount of your deliverance will be shown when you get around that same crowd. Mm -hmm. yep. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. That's right, brother. Now, I don't do this, and I'm not going to do this, but I can go to a, a bar and grill and sit there, everybody around me drinking, and me have a sandwich, and it wouldn't bother me in the least. True. Now, I know that if folk came by and saw me there, they wouldn't think I was there to pull somebody out, and they wouldn't think I was there to eat a sandwich. They'd think I was there to drink. So therefore, you're supposed to shun the very the very appearance of evil. All right. But I've been delivered so much that I could sit in the middle of it and it not bother me. Huh? I know what you said. And I am so I am so sound and so I got such a solid foundation in the doctrine of Jesus Christ that I don't care what other people people preach. It doesn't upset me. Uh huh. Huh? Amen. They can tell me how to baptize, how to do this, how to do that. I seen a sign just today. We were coming back. We were coming back from Paragon today, and I saw a sign on there that said, uh, "Be saved and be baptized in Jesus' name, or go to hell." Or be lost. I'm like, now wait a minute, dude. You're passing judgment. If you want to baptize that way, baptize that way. If you want to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, which is the same as the Lord Jesus Christ, by the way. The proper name for the proper name for the Father is Lord. The name of the Son is Jesus. And the proper name of the Holy Spirit is Christ. Now don't close your mind. St <laughs> study. And I don't care how many times you get dipped in water, if your heart's not right, you're not going to get there. So I don't care. I'm like, Paul, I'm just glad I don't baptize folk no more. Lest they say, I was baptized in Baldock's doctrine. No, I don't want that junk. See what I'm saying? But it doesn't upset me. It really doesn't upset me. Disagreeing on the scriptures doesn't upset me, but it pains me. It pains me. Yeah. And let me tell you why it pains me. Because I'm a teacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not an evangelist. People call me an evangelist. I am not an evangelist. Matter of fact, I operate more in the call of an, uh, an apostle. Than it, but I, you'll never hear me call myself that. I don't, I don't agree with I, I don't. I don't like titles. No, me neither. And the only reason I call myself Dr. Ball, Dr. People do is because I worked hard to get what I got. <laughs> I mean, I don't have to be called that. That's fine. But are you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so here we find that when we're in the middle of whatever's going on, God's going to make a way Amen. for that not to bother us, not to offend us, not to rock us, not to cause us to waver. We'll stand like a rock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, how can we do that? One of the ways that God has made is this. James tells us that we should go into every temptation counting it joy. Count it all joy. Joy, joy, joy. Don't be sad. <laughs> like that old hound dog that used to be on Hee Haw. Yeah. What's it they say? Woe is me and agony only in woe. Gloom despair. Yeah. That's the way a lot of Christians do when things stop going their way. Come on. Yeah, Beauregard. Yeah, I mean, man, when we're in church and everybody's around and faith has got a high level. And we've got an atmosphere going on that's filled with Jesus Christ. We're all okay. But when we get away from each other and we're faced with some kind of situation, 
I can't tell you of the hundreds that I've run across over the years ah. that get in down in gloom. Oh, they're in agony. They're in despair. Hey. Don't know what they're going to do. What are we going to do about this? How are we going to get out of that? Uh -huh. I don't know what we're going to do. Oh, no. God said he'll make a way that I'll have to strength to bear what's going on. So, <laughs> you know, I'll probably get when I go home. So, <laughs> no, it's been good. Man. I'm just teasing y'all. So, so, that brings up the question how does God make that way out? Now, when I say way out, I'm talking about the way to bear it. How does God do that? What, 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 can, what does God do? Well, it's evident that God makes a way out. He made a way out for Adam and Eve. Yes, he did. Come on. He made a way out for Cain and Abel. <laughs> Cain didn't go the same way. I heard just a few weeks ago our president say this. Now you all know just about three weeks ago he sat down at a dinner with the head honcho of the Muslims here in America. Yes. That may not disturb you, it but it disturbs me. I've said all along that he's a Muslim. Nobody would listen to me. You cannot have a name like he's got and not have some Muslim roots. His daddy was a full-blown Muslim. I heard him say this, whether it be Muslim whether it be Buddha, whether it be Hinduism, whether it be Christianity, we're all trying to find God. And God's made a way through Buddhism, Hinduism, Islamic. He's made a way for all of us to get to God. Well, now that's not what this says. That's right. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no man can get to the Father except by me. Now, stop, now, 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 I'm telling you, uh, and I don't mean to be political, but I'm telling you, if Christians have ever prayed, we better be praying now. That's right. Huh? That's right. We are right on the verge of becoming a, social, a socialist country. We, we are really close to communism coming into our country. Now, if you think you're having it hard now. That's yeah, true. I was, this past summer, when I was teaching mission school, we had a young man and his wife, they're in mission school, uh, and, and he, he they, they were from Nigeria. This guy was born into the Muslim faith. He was raised a strict Muslim, and then he came to find Jesus Christ. He told me this, he said, Doc, I want to tell you something. He said, Americans are stupid. He said they have the, the church in America has been rocked to sleep. Do you know, as I speak, we have 1.8 million Muslims in America. And if you'll, if you'll study it and look out, you'll find that they are strategically placed. Hold on now. He said the only reason that we've not been attacked by the Muslims on our on our own ground is because they know right now they're outnumbered. He said, but as soon as they get their numbers up in their, where they're strategically located, you'll start seeing wars break out in that city, in this city, and that city. And he said, here's what they're doing. They're, they're, they're coming in and they're preying on the young black men yeah. and trying to convert them to, 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 the, to Islamic faith. He said, here's the thing. The only true Muslim is born a Muslim. Amen. And those who have converted to, to Islam, Islam that's going to try to be with them, they will be the first that the true Islams will kill. Yes, they will. Yeah. He said, don't ever mistake this. You will never be a true friend to a Muslim. They may befriend you. They may come around you. They may act like they know you. But if they ever get a chance, they will kill you. Because the more people they kill, the greater their reward is standing before Allah. True. <laughs> and
and the church has just said, oh, well, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. Huh? Our president could not be in office right now if it hadn't have been for Christians who thought more for their pocketbook. Thank you. Who thought more about their pocketbook than they did the spiritual well-being of this country. Oh, I'm not saying all the guys before him did everything right. I'm just saying that we under we are under a spiritual attack right now. You can't turn your TV on unless you got to look at some lesbian or some gay person. Right. Right. Huh? I used to be a big fan of American Idol. Amen. I'll never turn it on again. Amen. Since they got Ellen DeGeneres, I mean DeGeneres. I'll never watch it again. They are not pushing that lifestyle on me. And they're not pushing it on my family. The devil is alive. And the church has sat back and said, well, God will take care of everything. Whoa. Whoa. He'll only take care of what you allow Him to take care of. And He'll let go of whatever it is you allow to be let go. Help us, Lord. Oh, my God. Do you know when, when the homosexuality really broke out in America? I mean, it's always been in America. But you know when it really broke out and everybody started coming out of the closet? I mean, what was that statement? The closet? <laughs> We all knew you were that by watching you. I mean, you, you, were ne you were never in the closet. We could tell. Right. Them old guys that walked around looked like God Shaw everywhere they went. Sugar dropped every place. Well, I mean, we knew. <laughs> but it really came into the open. Now, don't get mad at me. It really came into the open under the office of Bill Clinton. That's right. uh -huh. On his inaugural day, he left the, 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 the inaugural dance. And then he went to an inaugural ball with the gays and lesbians. Yep. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. He promoted that lifestyle. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> now, I don't know, but there got to be a reason why him and Hillary aren't together. I'm just saying that. I'm just... What's that got to do with the passage of Scripture you're talking about? Because there's temptation in our land, and it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger, and it appears that the Christians are getting weaker and weaker and weaker. You know why? Because we've been on a diet of ice cream and cake, and now it's time to put the ice cream and cake aside and the soft doctrine aside and get down to the truth. Right. The truth is not popular. Come on. Huh? When I came up in this thing, we preached against sin. Come on. Yes, sir. We preached about righteousness. Amen. Now the gospel is in the church. Oh, well, God understands. Yeah, huh? yeah he does. He does. There's a, there's a man that I'll not name, but but if I would name you, all would know him. And, and, and this guy had one of the greatest ministries in our country. He, I mean, he had a church. And this guy was probably one of the greatest teachers I'd ever heard in my life. Hebrew and Greek, my Lord, he could, he could just quote, 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 quote. Well, he fell off the deep end and began to preach a gospel called All Inclusion. Yeah, I know. And, 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 and his reasoning behind that is this. We didn't have any choice when Adam fell. Right? So... It wasn't our fault. It was Adam's. We didn't have any choice. Then he also says, well, it wasn't our choice that Jesus came back. I mean, that Jesus came. So, <laughs> since the first Adam brought sin into the world, and the last Adam destroyed sin, everybody's saved. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, that gospel is really... Then the man had a, made a trip out to Los Angeles and he sat in, in a church that was pastored by a lesbian and she gave him a word of prophecy. He went back to his hometown, started a church, and right now he has somewhere between 600 to 1,000 people 
And the majority of his congregation are gays and lesbians. And he doesn't preach against that lifestyle. Do what you do. You're all saved. This guy was a predominant leader in full gospel churches across America. Huh? See, you can't live just on the message of faith. You have to have that, but you can't just live on that. I mean, I've seen people go around, i got to confess this, i got to confess that. Well, yeah, but what are you doing while you're confessing? I mean, it's almost like I'm in the middle of sin, but I'm confessing that I'm not doing it. <laughs> huh? That'd be like saying, Brother Pat's not really there. I'm confessing he's not there. I don't care how much you confess it. He's sitting there. Yes, sir. That's dumber than a box of rocks. So we've had a sugar-coated message. Now you, you preachers ought to say amen. We have had a sugar-coated message for a long time. Yes. Uh -huh. But watch what's going to happen. The hard message is getting ready to come back around. Amen. Ah, ah. And it's either you're in or you're out. Listen to this. They took a survey just recently. Took a survey of the teenagers in America. And they asked them if they, if they believed in moral absolutes. Everybody knows what an absolute is. It's either right or it's wrong. The teenagers in America, only 38% said they believed in moral absolutes. Now that's shocking. But you want to hear some more shocking news? They surveyed Christian teenagers and asked them the same question. Do you believe in moral absolutes? 9% of teenage Christians said they believe in moral absolutes. That means 91% of teenage Christians in America do not believe in absolutes. You know why? Because there's a comfortable gospel going around that if it's right in your own eyes, it's right. The devil is a lie. I lived a lie a long time thinking that what I was living was right. And now I know I'm not the only one in the house that did that. I did things and found a way to justify them. That's why I'm so that's why I'm so stringent about how to study this book. Because if you want to study this book to justify how you believe, you can find it in there. It'll be out of context, but you can find it. Huh? You can make it say whatever you want to make it say. But we got to open this word up now and not and not have a preconceived idea, but let this word say to us what the word says to us. Add nothing to it. Take nothing away from it. And do what it says. He'll make a way. He'll make a way. He'll make a way. He made a way out for Adam and Eve. He made a way out for Israel when David stood before Goliath. Sure did. The scriptures are filled with places where God made a way. God, God made a way for Rahab and her family. God made a way. God made a way for Ruth. Oh, now, 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 let me give you another scriptural proof here and study this out. Do you know why Ruth went in and laid at the feet of Boaz? See, listen, there's nothing said in here just to be saying it. There's a reason why it's said. You know why, you know why she laid at his feet? Laying at his feet meant she was <coughs> subject to him. If she came in and laid at his side or in his arms... She would have played the role of a harlot. Yes, uh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but God made a way for her. Yes, He did. Oh, and Ruth, who was at one time a gleaner, <laughs> married the man that owned the field, yeah. and she quit being a gleaner and became a harvester. Some of us have been gleaning for years. I believe now it's time to get off of the corners of the field and get in the middle of the field and harvest what God's given us. I believe I'm going to shout here just a minute. Ah, hallelujah. 
we need to jump right in the middle of this thing. Yes, we need to get off of the banks. Come on. Hallelujah. The eagle said, oh, it's really good. You got your ankles wet. <laughs> oh, it's really good. You got your calves wet. Oh, it's really good that you got your thighs wet. Yeah. But why don't you just get out of those waters where you don't have the power to swim and you can't touch bottom? <coughs> yeah. See, most of us still have our feet where we can feel where we're at. Yeah. You can't trust the Holy Ghost doing that. Uh, That's right. Woo. I'm trusting the Holy Ghost, but I'm taking care of this thing. No, you're not. <laughs> And listen to this, you're not living by faith if you have if you have a plan B. Now let me let me explain this to you. God speaks to you and said, okay, here's what I want you to do. Okay, here, here, here. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, let's do this for an example. Okay. Okay. God, God, uh, God told Abram, get out of this country and go. Now, a plan B would say. Abram would say, okay, I'm going to go, but if this doesn't work, I'll come back. God doesn't have plans A's and plan B's. It's a plan A. And that plan is to get you from point A to point B. Now, the amazing thing I've noticed about God, He will tell us, you're at point A, and I'll meet you at point B, but He doesn't tell us about all the hell we got to go through to get to point B. <laughs> You know why? That's not important to God. Because he's already told you he'd meet you there. If God said he'd meet you there, it doesn't matter what goes on. You're going to get there. Amen. If you believe God. I said if you believe God. If you believe he's made a way. Amen. This old stuff of, of fleecing God to find out if he's... <laughs> Well, Gideon did. Yeah, and Gideon knew it was upsetting God. Yeah, it was against God. Because the last time he did, he said, don't get mad at me. Don't get angry with me. And listen. <laughs> listen, Gideon didn't do that to try to find out if it was God's will. No. Gideon did that to try to get out of the will. <laughs> and these people go around, well, I'm just living in the permissive will. The devil is a lie. God doesn't have a permissive will. Uh oh. Grip <laughs> Another one did. Leave it up to Doc. Huh? Romans 12 tells us I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the, uh, unto the Lord, which is reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, perfect, an acceptable will of God. That That is not three wills. Those are three adjectives describing the will. <laughs> I mean, he's permissive will because he's permitting it to go on. That don't mean he likes it. And the reason he's letting it go on because you made a choice to do it. If you want to live in a hog trough, he'll let you live in a hog trough. Huh? If you want to be ugly, he'll let you be ugly. But don't blame that on the will of God. Blame it on your will. Because His will is nothing but good, perfect, and acceptable. Are y'all, are y'all okay? I'd be saying, Brother Pat, when's he not coming back? I'm teasing. I hope. You didn't just recover. Okay. Yeah, when, when you recover. Like, oh, Lord God, we're supposed to have revival and he'd be the snot out of us. It's all right. God, that's the truth. Meet on. Bro. So, Meet so on. here's what happens. God makes a way out and the way he does is God pours out. God pours out. Now what? Just because he pours out doesn't mean that you'll get what he pours out. I wish I had a bunch of pastors in here. I just, now, 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 now what, what do you mean by that, Brother Ball? Okay, here, here. Remember the story about uh, Samaria and how the Syrians had surrounded the city. Yeah. 
No one could come in, no one could go out, and they began to starve. They called for the prophet, and Elisha said, Tomorrow! 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 There's going to be barley, going to be meal. You're going to be all right tomorrow. What is that? Okay. And, and the Bible says the Lord in whom the king leaned upon looked at the prophet and said, <laughs> it might be so if God had windows in heaven and would open them. Now I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. Don't someone come back to me and say, no, it says... <laughs> Okay, now, now watch, now watch. God had already poured out. But what he had poured out was in the camp of the Syrians. Yep. So God pours out, and then the next thing is, you and I must step out. Yep. Are you hearing me? Yeah. We have to do something. you got to make a move. <laughs> Matter of fact, I come tonight, I mean, all day long I was thinking about this. Tell them tonight, it's your move. Yeah. That's a good it's your move. It's your move. It's your move. What you gonna do now? It was already poured out. No one could get out of the city, but there happened to be four guys who were outside the city. Yeah. Yep. That no one wanted in the city. That's right. And one guy heard the other guy's belly growl. <laughs> now this is my version. Had the belly hurt. Said, oh man, are you hungry? He said, yeah. And the, and the other guy said, man, I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. And the other guy said, man, I wish we had a horse to eat. <laughs> the other guy said, what do you think we should do? Go back into the city? They said, nah, I can't go back in there. They're all dying in there. They're starving in there. It ain't going to do us any good to go back there. Right. One the other guy said, well, Maybe we should just save our strength and stay here. They said, no. If we stay here, we're going to die in the condition we're in. Yeah. And another one said, you know what we might as well do? <laughs> we might as well just go ahead and march toward the enemy's camp. Yeah. Uh -huh. The worst that could happen to us <laughs> is they kill us. Uh -huh. And if they do, we'll be out of our misery. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> So let's just make a move. As soon as God had already poured out the provisions, as soon as those four men stepped out, God broke out. What do you mean he broke out? They heard this noise. It was like the earth was rumbling. And they said, ooh. Somebody must have got out and got with the Egyptians. There's armies coming to us. No, 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 no. Here's how stupid the enemy is. They ran off. Yes, they did. And left their horses. Now, if I'm going to leave, I'm going to ride a horse. Why should I walk when I can ride? Come on. They took off running. They left their clothes, they left their food, they left their gold, they left their everything. everything that God had poured out. And God was waiting on someone to step out so he could create a breakout so everybody could get out of the condition. Now watch this. Thing. God's breakout for you is not for you. I know what. They sat there, Brother Pat, and they got, they got full. Yeah, they did. They're going to bury the gold and silver so they could come back and get it so no one could find it. They could know where it's at. And finally, one looked at this and said, Man, we're not doing too well. No, we're not doing good. <laughs> God said, Wait, we were. Jesus, we got clothes on. We're warm. Got a full belly. The hog spirit's on me. I feel like taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh. Now, everybody's ever reared in the country. I don't know what that means. <laughs> and one said, no, 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 no. You don't understand. There's a city back there dying. And we have what they need. What they need. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Let's take it there. And tomorrow, <laughs> yeah. what the God poured out, and because of them stepping out, 
God broke out. They took it to the city, and the Lord who made fun uh -huh. of the prophet got trampled to death. He yeah. told him, he said, you'll see it, but you're not going to eat. Listen to me. Listen to me, church. If some of us don't wake up, we're going to see it, but we're not going to be partakers. Oh, God. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. There's a revival coming, so you can't get all caught up in, woe is me. That's right. I'm going through a hard time. Yeah. Oh, God, don't you understand? My life will be, well, get a job. <laughs> They're out there. Huh? They are, son. Yeah, I just want to pay my tithes, but I can't. Well, quit drinking so many Pepsis. <laughs> go, brother. Just go for it. Go on, brother. Watch this. It's it's hard. Hard. Just, just watch this. I don't have it to give. Okay, 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 okay. Now, I know there are more than this, so please, this is for my own simple mind, okay? Let's say Pepsis are 50 cents a can. I know they're higher than that. But let's just say, because it's easy for me to figure it this way. And you drink two of them a day. That's a dollar a day you're spending on PepsiCo. That's $30 a month. $28 in, just in case someone wants to correct me, $28 in February, unless it's, unless it's leap year, then it's 29 <laughs> And then unless it's a month that has 31 then it's 31 But for the sake of conversation, it's thirty dollars a month. Now, what's thirty times twelve? Three hundred and sixty dollars a year. You're spending on Pepsi's at two a day. Well, why don't you cut back and drink one a day? That'll cut your expense back to one hundred eighty dollars a year, and you'll have one hundred eighty dollars free to give to the church. Don't tell me you don't have it to give. Quiet now. No, it's Bless you quiet. Yeah. Why can't you cut back on pizza and start? All right now. Fixing stuff at home. <laughs> no, pizza's my favorite food. Matter of fact, I love pizza so much that I can eat it cold in the morning with a glass of milk. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. That's when it's great. Isn't it good? Up in the morning, cold pizza and a glass of milk. Whoa. That's like dying and going to heaven, man. <laughs> I mean, matter of fact, up until I came up here, I had quit eating at fast food restaurants. It's the people you associate with. Yeah. I, 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 I quit eating that. Do you know why I quit eating at it? Because I found out what it was doing to my body. But I got to admit, I've visited White Castle quite a few times since I've been here. That does something to my body, too. But I can get rid of that. <laughs> yeah! you got to say one thing. you got to agree with one thing. If you go to Brother Ball like me, you're at least going to laugh. You may not like me, but you're going to laugh. <laughs> Do you just now get it? No. <laughs> Did you have to tell her? No. Did you? More or less? No. I thought you were smarter than it. He sits in his own key. Yeah. Yeah. You don't think you can say, ooh, somebody's been there. <laughs> it's the last night, brother. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'll not continue this misery very long. But in the middle, in the middle of your temptation, God is saying, don't worry about it. Quit thinking about it. That's right. Quit thinking about how rough you have it. Huh? Man, I done poured out blessing on top of blessing on top of blessing. I gave my son that you might have life and have it more abundantly. What are you crying about? Amen. Yes, sir. you ever heard of uh, Bishop Eddie Long? Uh-huh. Man, you know when Eddie Long started preaching, he's in Atlanta. When Eddie Long started preaching, they called him the cussing preacher. 
It's the truth. It's the truth. He came from the streets, and that's the only language he knew. And he'd get up and preach, and you, you think I'm bad. Oh, yeah. His wife would say, Eddie, you can't talk that way. She'd say, what's wrong with that? It's just a word. <laughs> no, no, you're going to offend people. But anyway, I, it, uh, Bishop Long was at, at, at a... At a uh, 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 mall in, in, in Atlanta looking for a pair of shoes that would match his suit. Now, I can understand that. I mean, you got to match stuff. Right. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what. I, uh, uh, a week ago Sunday, I was at Mike Pender's. And I wore a pink suit. I wore it here. I wore a pink suit. Had a, had a pink striped shirt, a pink tie. Pink shoes and pink socks. And I want you to know there was a woman in that church that had enough nerve to ask me after church if my underwear was the same color. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, ma'am, I do have limits. <laughs> so I told her, I do have I couldn't believe she had the nerve to ask me that. I'm like, I want to smack her. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got to thinking, she probably didn't hear anything I preached on that, that morning. That's all she was thinking about. Jesus, <laughs> God called me to lighten up your day. Let me let me tell you guys. Can I tell you why I, why I preach like this? In 1984, I went through a nervous breakdown. A nervous breakdown. I had been preaching for 14 years. And I went through a nervous breakdown. They had me on medication that at times I couldn't even tell you what my name was. Some of you have heard the stories about folks in the nut house with having a Thorazine shuffle. Yes. That's true. I had the Thorazine shuffle. Man. Huh? I, took four I was so there. bad that I saw elephants and mice and snakes and rats in my room. And the biggest part of 1984, I don't even remember. I lost almost a year of my life. I made up my mind after that, I'm going to quit taking life so seriously. I'm going to lighten up. Good move. And I'm going to have me some fun. If this, if, if this gospel is right that serving Jesus is fun, then I, I need to quit looking like I'm sucking on a lemon all the time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hello? That's right. Yeah, I can just look like one. But I'm not a limit, I'm limit A. Thank you. Thank you. You're a ray of sunshine. Yeah, ray of sunshine. That's why I do what I do. I want to bring some light into your life. I want to bring some sunshine into your life. I want to bring some laughter into your life. This old traditional thing that we've been in in church for years, like we can't smile, we can't go into the amusement park, we can't play a board game that's got dice on it. Come on. What's wrong? Can't play cards? Well, don't invite me. I love euchre. Me too, brother. <laughs> love it. Love yes, sir. It. Yes, sir, buddy. I don't gamble. No. But I like to play. But now, if you really want to put some money on it, I mean. <laughs> I, 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 I need to quit doing stuff like that. Right? Yeah, I love to play poker, though. I love to play. Yeah, see, I do too. I used to love to play. I don't poker. play. Don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't even buy lottery tickets. Oh, well, now. Go that far. Huh? Nothing. Well, see, but your, money, your money is easier to make than mine. That's right. I have to work for my. They dollars. just give me mine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, sister. Sister Judy takes care of it. You're a kept man. Yes. I'm aware of it too, brother. I told my wife the other night. I said, "Do you know that brother Ryan's a hairdresser?" She said, "You mean he works in a barber shop?" I said, "No, he's a hairdresser." She said, "Is he any good?" I said, what? Yes, I said, I don't know. Look at Judy's hair. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and she said, really? I said, yeah. I said, you know, you, you know what he told me? She said, what? Oh, what I, I said, say? he told me, he told me that the reason, he's got the best job in the world. Now, I've told you this in secret. I'm telling it openly. <laughs> 
He told me, he said, I got the best job in the world. I work around women all day long. Yes, sir. I wouldn't want that job. Oh, I love it. He wouldn't want that job. The way I am, I'd be in trouble. They'd be smacking me and everything. Yeah. In the middle of your situation. Quit thinking about your situation. Amen. Do you know the more you dwell on it, the more intensified it becomes. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. The more you think you're nothing, the more you'll convince yourself you're nothing. Right. The more you think God's against you, the more you'll convince yourself He's against you. Right. Huh? God's not against you, He's for you. Yeah. And if God be for us, yeah. ah, who can be against yeah. us? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I mean, we do need to cause an uprising. Yeah. Hey. Come on. Hmm? Do you know that Jesus was a revolutionist? Yeah, he was. He was. Caused trouble everywhere. He went against the he went against the grain, man. Hmm? He had to. They said, do you know it's unlawful to heal on the Sabbath? Jesus said, Well, what would you do if your ox was in the ditch on the Sabbath? Let him stay there till the next day. Why would you get him out? Get him out of there. Well, I'd go get him out. And, and then I've always heard, we shouldn't work on Sunday. Oh, yeah. That's my hardest day of work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. And Sunday ain't the Sabbath anyway. No, Saturday is. Right. But let me shock you with this one. When you study the scriptures, you got to watch out. Because Sabbath doesn't mean seventh. Am I right? It doesn't mean. Sabbath means. A day of consecration and rest mm -hmm. to God. <laughs> and Brother Pat said, and I'm getting ready to close. He said it earlier. We need to enter into yes. His rest. That is what this scripture is alluding to. We can be in the middle of term, turmoil and be at rest. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chief. Listen, yes. I've been in the ministry full time since 1973. I've lived by faith since 1973. And God has never failed me. Oh, people have failed me. And I've had lean time. But I quit complaining about it. As I, I, let me finish the story about Eddie Long. I quit complaining about it. And here's what, here's what he did. He was complaining <laughs> because he couldn't find himself a pair of shoes that would match his suit. He was going through the mall just complaining. I can't believe it. I can't. He said, and wasn't it just like God to have a man in a wheelchair come by me that had no feet? Uh -huh. So before you think you got it so bad, uh -huh. huh? look around. Visit the oncology ward. Uh -huh. Visit the insane asylum. Yeah. Right. Visit the prisons. Go to Ryland. Go to Ryland. Yeah. Before you think your family has it so bad, just remember, if you compare yourself with some other folk, you got it really good. That's right. After all, you could have been born in Africa. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Lord. You could be in Ethiopia right now. Hmm? You could be you could be somewhere in Indonesia right now. Yeah. Where you're starving to death because you're afraid to eat a cow because it may be your late sister. I didn't like her anyway. So, so we can so we can have a we can have we can have a cookout, can't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, put the barbecue on. I mean, no, you can't kill that. that, that Henry. Yeah. Well, Uncle Henry, I'm sorry, but I'm starving to death, man. You died once, you might as well die again. <laughs> See, we've got it good. Listen, we have it good. We do. As bad as some things are in America, honey, we got it good. Yeah. And watch this. Because I preach all over, and as bad as some churches are, you got it good here. Yeah, yeah you do. Everybody want the big church. No. I'm closing with this. No. Everybody wanting a mega church. No. Well, a good friend of mine, a good friend of mine by the name of Betty Jean Robinson. Yeah. I just read her book. She's she's a neat lady. I was on vacation. I we were in, in a conference together, and she got up, and there's a bunch of preachers, and she got up and she said, Before all you preachers desire big crowds and mega churches, remember this. 
Infection causes enlargement. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. Inflammation. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'll leave it right there. But in the middle of your situation, you ought to find a praise. Absolutely. Yes. Because God's done made a way out. He's, still He's waiting on you to step the out. Is still true. And I'm then, <laughs> and then, he will, he will break out yes. with a revival Thank inside you. of love you. Love you Can you say, someone give the Lord a hand of prayer. I hope that this week, that, that, that if nothing else, I've prompted you to study the word. That I've prompted you to dig into the truth. Huh? Jesus didn't say your opinion will set you free. He said the truth will make you free. And there's a difference in being made free and set free. Yes, there is. Amen. You can be set free and not walk in your freedom. But when you're made free, you're already pushed out of your bondage. Think about it. Think about it. It's an ongoing thing. It's an ongoing thing. Are you free tonight? Amen. Do you love the Lord tonight? Are you ready? Are you ready for what God's pouring out? Yeah. Do you have the strength to step out? Yeah. Well, then if you do, expect God to break out. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah.